Airbrush Nouveau has been confirmed to have Squid Beacons and Inkstorm, which feels a bit awkward to me and most other people I've heard discussing it. Octobrush is a fairly aggressive weapon that's really good at flanking and can also be played to attack up over the top of high ground, similarly to something like a Trislosher. A brush is most dangerous when it's getting at the enemy team from a side angle, and they're having to devote resources to keeping it away while also dealing with the brush's teammates in another direction. The brush is unusually survivable because it can put the brush down and just run away through enemy ink, using its fast turning speed to make opponents miss on the way, so trying to get it out of that flank angle isn't easy, but ignoring it means you're liable to get flanked or sharked. A noted weakness of the brushes, in general, as main weapons, is that they really struggle to fight anything head-on without sharking. They have basically no mobility when they start flicking at someone, and there's a pretty significant cooldown before they can start moving again. So if they start flicking at you, it's usually all or nothing for them. It's usually pretty hard for them to get away after that. With their short range and relatively slow kill time, that makes it really hard for them to approach an opponent they want to attack from the angle that player is looking at. They can't paint their way forward for themselves quickly because of their short range and because of the painting pattern, and running at someone with the brush down is going to take too long. If you're pushing at a brush head-on, you're likely playing a weapon that outranges it and splats faster, so if it doesn't have a way to retreat or a sub-weapon it can throw at you, it's kinda stuck. On wider maps that give the brush room to run around in, something like beacons works pretty well, because it can establish a flanking threat that opponents have to deal with even after they clear away the brush, since it'll just jump back in unless they spend time shooting the beacons down too. Splatoon 1 had an octobrush kit that really supported this playstyle by giving it Kraken, which had a much faster activation time than it does in Splatoon 3, meaning it was able to get Kraken jump into one of the more aggressive beacon placements and not have to worry very much about how dangerous a position it was in, because it was landing with an invincible special it could activate whenever it wanted, attacking the enemy team from an angle they really didn't want to be attacked from. On maps as narrow as a lot of them are in S3, sometimes you don't even have a flank route like that to work with. The task at hand just revolves around getting through one of two obvious choke points that a single backline weapon can cover at the same time. This is why a lot of players were really hoping for an aggressive bomb. Here's Redshell, top level Octobrush player, tweeting that they wanted Fizzy or Autobomb, and that if the weapon got one of those, the Inkstorm kit would be fine. Chara, the other top level representative of the weapon in the West that I'm aware of, also notes in a video on the subject that the lack of a bomb hurts the main weapon, that it's going to struggle more to get in without one. On maps where beacons are particularly valuable, I think it's definitely not going to be the worst choice. The opponents leaving you a beacon means they're leaving you a free flank opportunity. But like we've mentioned, with the way the maps are designed, there aren't that many great beacon maps. Chara cites Flounder Zones, saying that with Rain being a strong entry tool on that map, and beacons also being useful for maintaining a foothold on the map and preventing Flounder's difficult lockout state, those aspects of the kit would synergize well, and the main weapon, which likes verticality, would also do well enough at sharking for picks around mid. He also thinks it might have a niche if it can paint quickly for special. Inkstorm is only on so many main weapons right now, so if you want a weapon that can play more aggressively than a custom Jet Squelcher or a Big Swig, but also farm rain faster than a Nautilus, there might be a niche there for just outputting a lot of Inkstorms and playing aggressively. There are a lot of conditional statements packed into that, though. Plenty of people are willing to play around a Nautilus right now, so it'll always be competing with a particularly strong weapon for part of its niche. Unlike the Octobrush, the Nautilus isn't scared of someone pushing at it on the front lines, it has a lot of range and a really fast kill time, it is the bane of the existence of a short-range shooter, and you can't really say the same about something like the Octobrush. If it can't be run on very many map modes, there's always the question of whether it's worthwhile to learn the weapon, just for those few situations where it does work, instead of playing a weapon that you get value out of more often, more reliably, on a variety of different competitive teams. This is one of those cases where you can't look at any one part of the kit and say this aspect is weak, but where there's just a lack of synergy. In most cases, the elements of the kit don't support each other's weaknesses or amplify their strengths very well. I could see this being a component someone fits into a very specific comp, where other weapons are being picked that support the brush in ways the brush can't for itself, and I can see there being specific map modes where it's just found to be a relatively viable pick independent of the team comp. But in the majority of cases, it feels like a lot of work to fit this into a team comp. It seems like enabling it will take a lot of its teammates' attention, 
And at least right now, before we have our hands on it, people are kind of scratching their heads trying to figure out what value the brush could bring that would make that extra effort worthwhile when you could just pick something more independent instead. Okay.